Okay, on this model, we have the Mons pubis, which is the fat pack that's found over the labia majora and minora. The blue striped region is the clitoris. We have the pubic symphysis. Uh, the, va uh, the vagina is okay. I think the anterior fornix, so this is that fold right here, and the posterior fornix are good. I might label the uterus, probably not, this rounded region right here. Um, the ovary, back here, number one. The fimbrae are number three, and the uterine tube is number two. And that's probably all for that model. This one is a little more specific. Uh, again, we have the mons pubis, the labia majora, the labia minora. We have the clitoris here for number six. Don't forget about the urinary structure, so the urethra and the bladder. Pubic symphysis. The vagina. Again, the anterior and posterior fornix. Uh, this is the cervix or the cervical region, essentially below this line that you can see that someone else has drawn on the model. And then above that, that's the uterus. The open area on the inside of the uterus is called the lumen of the uterus, which means an open space. The lumen? The lumen. Mm -hmm. The light pink region right here, that's the endometrium. The muscly region is the myometrium. And then this white line that you see that surrounds the uterus, that's the perimetrium. We have the vesicuterine pouch, which is found between the uterus and the bladder. And then we have the recto-uterine pouch, which is found between the uterus and the rectum. Again, you have the fimbrae back here, the infundibulum, which is the bend, the ovary in yellow, and the uterine tube's not really good on this one. I'll probably use one of these other models for that. <sighs> this guy's okay. It's not the best model. Um, the things that I might label pubic symphysis again. The vagina is all right. Um, let me hold it up a little bit. The ovary, the fimbrae, uterine tube, perhaps, on that model. That's about it. That model's not terribly exciting. All right. This model's a little bit better. I like it because it's enlarged, and so you can really see the structure as well. We have the hymen, which is number 10, right here. All right, so the circle of tissue that surrounds the entrance to the vagina. Vagina is number nine. The external os is number eight. The cervical canal, so this pinched in region is the cervix. The cervical canal is number six. Number seven is the internal os. And then the light pink color, that's the endometrium again, the internal lining of the uterus. The myometrium is this kind of darker pink red. Parametrium is the outer covering of the uterus here, so it's a different tissue layer. Remember the fundus is the raised region, the fundus of the uterus is the raised region above the uterine tubes. Now I'm going to turn this around. And you can see the uterine tubes on this one pretty well. And again, the infundibulum is essentially the bend, and the ampulla is also in there. The fimbrae are the little fingers, finger-like projections. Mm -hmm. And then we have the ovary again. Um, that's about it for that one. <clears throat> when it comes to the mammary, gl mammary glands, pardon me. This is an older model. Really, this is mostly adipose that they're representing here. And then this is the areola the nipple, and the lactiferous ducts are actually in the white stripes, the white stripes here. That's where the milk's going to actually come out of the breast. This model's a little newer, but it has some stuff on it that, that we don't need to know. The In the yellow is the adipose tissue surrounding the breast. Mm -hmm. Each one of these little sacs is the alveoli. A group or a cluster of them is called the lobule or lobe. And then we have the lactiferous ducts again in the light brown here. 
we've got again the areola which is the colored region and then the nipple ready for males mm -hmm. okay this model really only has three structures that are important when it comes to males back here 49 and they're labeled the same on both sides this is the vas deferens this is the seminal vesicle and this is the prostate gland Okay, on this model, again, it's missing some pieces, um, but what we have is we have the scrotum, which is the outer sac that holds the testes, which is number 15, the epididymis, 16, the vas deferens would run way back here, come back around to the seminal vesicle, right there, they have the ejaculatory duct, and then this donut-shaped structure right here, this is the prostate. We have the bladder, the urethra, that comes down, the urethra comes all the way out until you get to the external urethral orifice. The large open spaces in this tissue, this is called the corpus cavernosum, and this is the corpus spongiosum. The spongiosum is closer and has smaller holes closer to the urethra. Okay. This model, again, it has a good corpus cavernosum, a good corpus spongiosum. Um, we have the scrotum out here, number 16, testes, epididymis. This has a nice vas deferens, really easy to label. All right. The seminal vesicle, they've set off to the side, number 5. And then number 6 is the ejaculatory duct. 7 is the prostate. Um, and other than that, maybe the urethra, those would be the things that I might pick. And Oh, I forgot, the pubic symphysis. The males have pubic symphysis as well. Okay. And then, last but not least, we have a couple of these newer models. Um, the testes, epididymis, and then you'll see the vas deferens actually travels up around all the way back to the back of the bladder. And there's the seminal vesicle, number four. Number five is the prostate. And this is from the back side or the exterior. If I turn it around, the ejaculatory duct comes through the prostate, so this is all prostate, this is the ejaculatory duct, and this is the urethra. And there is a urogenital diaphragm, so it's a muscle, separates uh, and allows for more control and, and, and of urination as well as, as movement um, associated with this region of the abdominal pelvic region. Um, you have the bulbo-urethral gland, so this really itty-bitty little gland. That's going to be what creates the pre-ejaculate. Okay. Right? And then, in purple on this model, is the corpus spongiosum, and the corpus cavernosum is in white. Pubic symphysis. And I should mention that all of this is considered the penis. The rounded end is the gland's penis. Um, I think that might be it for that model. You mentioned something in your audio lecture, the curran or the... Oh, the crura. Yeah, the, the crura is associated with the skin and the tissues that are, that are here close to where uh, in most male circumcision occurs. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Are we missing anything? No, I think you got it all. Thank you.